Hello and welcome to Comic Book Herald's Creanitators. I'm Dave Busing, founder and editor-in-chief of ComicBookHerald.com. Today, very excited to be joined by comics creator Matt Kent, the author of Mind Management, Black Badge, Grass Kings, Revolver, Beer Case, Berserker, and a whole lot more. Today we're going to be talking about the launch of Matt's new imprint at Dark Horse Comics, Flux House, which is going to be kicking off with Mind Management Bootleg, the return of of one of my favorite comic series of all time. I think I have it ranked sixth or fifth all time right now. It's incredibly high on the CBH best comics of all time. I love it. I love it to death. I reread it recently, and we're going to talk about that series a little bit, as well as this line. Matt, let's start here. First off, thanks so much for joining. Second, it feels like an era of creators sort of setting up shop as their own mini publishers with their own imprints. That's definitely a trend that's been happening. Um, what for you is the appeal of Flux House and kind of how long has it been in the works with, uh, with Dark Horse? Um, yeah, I, uh, I guess I've been working on it over a year. I sort of put, uh, I started developing a few books here or there and then, um, having some fun ideas about how I wanted to promote the books and what, what the design I want, uh, like different weird things with production and design and marketing and, um. And I realized that I needed to, I wanted to do something that was going to be across all of the books, you know, something that was sort of unite them in their sort of weirdness and, and like uniqueness. And, um, and really, I think it was because I'm blaming digital comics for this because I was reading, I started reading comics on my iPad so much because they look so good. Like, um, you can yeah. get them right away. There's like, I'm too, I'm so lazy now too, like getting out of the house and like, eh. I'll just, but if I can download it and read it right away, um, you know, I was like, oh, I'll do that, you know, and then they look so great and they're bright. And uh, um, so I think because I was enjoying that so much, it made me question what I was doing. You know, it's like, why am I doing, why am I doing these books, like 24 page monthly comics? Why am I doing graphic novels? Um, why, why am I doing that? <laughs> you know, it was like, I needed to think of a reason to they needed to be books you know if i couldn't think of a reason for them to be books then i needed to let's figure out what they need to be then like if it's, is it going to be web comics is it going to be something you read on your phone um and i didn't really i still like books i like i like uh having books on my shelf i like walking by looking at books remembering books just by looking at the spines and and sort of having that sort of like um connection to stuff i've read in the past and i realized uh like I, I was reading books on the Kindle for a while. And then, and then even on the iPad, I, you sort of forget what you've read. People ask me, I'm like, Oh, what are you reading mm -hmm. recently? I was like, man, I don't know. I read like a hundred books, but they're just all, they're all on the computer or wherever in a folder somewhere. Um, and so you, I feel like I'm just not as connected to those. There's a disconnect. And so I really wanted to do books that had to be books. You know, they have, you know, they'll work great as, comic books when they come out and then we'll collect them and then the books will be very special. You know, they'll have interesting covers or like a way to interact with them. Um, something that you can't get any other way. Yeah. I love that. Okay, cool. I mean, I've always, I found it interesting rereading mind management. Um, I got the, the nice field guide omnibus editions, So I had a chance to peruse those, which was super fun. <laughs> and one thing that I've always loved about it is just creatively structurally, you know, you include messages in the gutters, right? But there's a physicality to literally turning the book, like for the optimal reading experience, which I've always thought it was kind of a digital destroyer because if you do that on your iPad, it's super annoying because yeah, <laughs> your, yeah. your screen's going to rotate, you know? So just little things like that, that create mm -hmm. that that value in print. Um, I love that. I love that idea that you're incorporating that into Fluxus here, uh, fighting against like compelling reasons to read digitally, to have a real purpose about, okay, if we're going to buy this in print, why are we doing that? You've talked, you've done stuff in the past and you've talked about, you know, some non-traditional methods of selling that, right? Like you've, you've done records, like read along records. I have a, yeah. a copy of with my management. You've talked about doing a deck of cards, right? Some really innovative sort of things. Mm -hmm. What's, what are your favorite sort of non-traditional methods that you've, you've done or you have in the pipeline for some of these? Yeah, I, uh, I think one of my favorites is this book, Red Handed, that I designed to have a page where I burn, I burn like. A corner of the page off like when i sign the book i get a lighter and i burn half the page and and then sort of works with this the page behind it so the page the panel i've burned off reveals the text below so when you're reading that page with the burn page you're reading the text below it 
and then you flip the page and then yeah. that, it changes the meaning of everything, you know, just by burning a corner off. Um, so that's probably that's my so favorite cool. thing. And that was, yeah. I, what happens is I sit on ideas like that. Like I was like, oh, I want to, it really, the idea comes from, oh, I want to burn, I want to burn a page in a book, <laughs> but, but not for no reason. So I have to sort of hang on to those, that, those impulses, like to do something weird <laughs> and then, and then wait till it fits the story. Because to me, like it has to fit the story as well. Like I, it has to, it has to be yeah. part of the narrative in some way. And, and the beauty with mind management is um, just the concept of mind management means it, it's sort of a, it's sort of intruding on your, your world anyway. Like it's the idea is, you know, mm -hmm. it's sort of trying to make you feel paranoid while you're reading this book. Like, am I getting everything? There's secret messages that are not, they're kind of obvious to see. So then now you're looking for them all over the place. Um, so for me, mind management was a perfect way to sort of explore all these weird ideas of like delivering story, um, in a unique way. And, uh, it still is part of the theme, part of the story, part of the character. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. Did, did people ever freak out at cons when you like took a lighter to their, <laughs> to their yeah, yeah. <laughs> the, 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 I did a book release party and the book release party, I did this thing, um, I only did it once, but I, there's a, there's a, there's a short story within this crime book, Red Handed. There's a short st story in there where a guy buys a famous painting and then he cuts it up into a hundred pieces and sells just the pieces of it. So everybody that's buying it knows, oh, I'm getting a little piece of this famous painting. And that way he's been able to sell it a hundred times um, and also get rid of the famous painting. So no one person is, is the receiver of the stolen art because the art in a way has been destroyed you know, and everybody owns a piece. So um, mm -hmm. I did for that, I did like a book reading where I did a live um, reading of the book. And while I was doing it, I painted a big uh, picture, like an image from the book and then timed it out so that uh, I painted the whole thing and then cut the thing into a hundred pieces and then handed that out, signed and handed them out um, at the end of the signing. And then that was fun. But then I was also then burning the books when people lined up afterwards, I was burning the books and then a woman came up, um, she was a librarian, and she was like, you're not burning my book. <laughs> I was like, well, it's part of the story. I tried to explain. She's like, no, 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 you're not burning the book. <laughs> she couldn't, she wasn't having it. So it was, it was the one of the only times, probably the only time I didn't do it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> that's great. Um, okay, so before we get into to Fluxus a little bit more and sort of the tenets of, of the art movement and what you're trying to do, you mentioned sort of in passing there that one thing you're looking to do is sort of connect your creator own works. Um, is that, so that was actually something I was going to ask because so in fear case, the book you did one of your projects with Tyler Jenkins, and you've done a bunch of great books with, with Tyler and Hillary, um, grass Kings, black badge, for example, mm -hmm. there's a, there's a reference to a novel by Philip Verge, yeah. which is super close to Phil yeah. Verve for my, <laughs> so I was going to ask like, okay, are we teasing some crossover shared universe stuff? How, how, how onto that am I? Like, is that happening? Is that is that part of the plan here? Yeah, there's a character. So there's Philip Philip Verb was a character that first showed up in Revolver. It was for a, a book I did for Vertigo, oh, um, and he was sort okay. of like a, yeah, he was a um, sort of a reality hopping. Like he he could pop in between universes. That was like his whole thing. Is like he's living in. He can pop back and forth and use his knowledge of one universe to exploit another. Um, and so that was sort of a self-contained book. Um, but then, uh, he, I kind of named him after a character that had showed up. Uh, I think he showed up in two sisters or super spy an earlier book. And I was like, oh, this is going to be that guy. He's going to be like my villain. I always, every book needs sort of like a, a villain, you know? And I'm like, I don't know. And, uh, so I just kept plugging him in and kept plugging him in. So he was in revolver and then he showed up in my management as the husband of, of the main eraser she was kind of the villain or whatever of that book um he shows up in there for a little bit and then i was like i was like oh well, it makes sense because he he's popping into these different realities um so it makes sense yeah. for him to be in everything i do <laughs> you know and sometimes he's the main character sometimes he's just a, a secondary or in the background or he's just referenced but i like the idea that he that he's a writer too like he's a writer and he shows up he's in he's a main character in bang um, the series I did with Wilfredo. Um, so he's a main character again in that, and he's more of a author figure there. 
Um, but he's, yeah, he's the same character in all of them. And I had to, the interesting thing is I had to I changed his name to Verge because um, that bang and then um, a couple ones got op, they got option for movie. They're developing the movie TV versions, right? So, oh, okay. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, if you're going to buy, if you're going to option bang, I was like, well, I had to be like, well, we might want to change his name because he's in mind management, which is being developed somewhere else for TV. So I didn't want all the, the different people optioning everything to get mad. But like, <laughs> hey, what, this is our character. I was like, no, no, he's no one's character. Yeah. I don't control him either. He just shows up and everything. So I, I, <laughs> my solution was to just like tweak his name a little bit. So every time he shows up now, his name is going to be a little bit different. <laughs> just so because I want to keep my continuity, but also just, you know, I can't. I'm not building a cinematic universe. I have different people optioning different things. So <laughs> it's, a, it's a little bit different. That's so cool. I love that. That's funny. I, I see, I read revolver well before I had read mind management. So I didn't even, I didn't even make the, con now that you say it, I'm like, Oh yeah, that was, <laughs> that wasn't, a, that wasn't hidden. Yeah. And you, what's crazy, <laughs> I like, you don't, it doesn't dots, matter. Yeah. You, you don't need to, you don't need to care about it. Like I love, I love looking sure. online when people will like with, Tarantino's universe and how like all those overlaps of weird characters like I love that stuff yeah but, yeah but also I'm like I'm too lazy to like really uh figure it out or care about it you know <laughs> <laughs> it's just there it just is that's awesome so with with Fluxus you know so this is based the Fluxus is a real art movement right so you've got Flux mm -hmm. House which is a you know people have read my management you know you've referenced Flux Houses, you've referenced um, Marcel Duchamp, Salvador Dali, um, you know, they come up, right, yeah. as influences and art artists who are, you know, sort of a part of the narrative, but also there's real history there. With the actual Fluxus movement, um, that could get real avant-garde, right? That could get extremely out there. Mm -hmm. And one thing that I've appreciated about, you know, what you do with comics, your creator own stuff is like, there's a really nice balance between accessibility, but then also pushing boundaries. How how far out do you want to get with, you know, with this imprint? Do you want to take it further? Like what's the, how's that sort of um, ethos going to, going to infect these books? Yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to try to walk that razor's edge, right? Or thread the needle, whatever it is to do something that I'm trying to do something new that hasn't been done. Mostly not, not to be like, not to show off or do it's because I, I I've gotten bored. Like I've been doing it 20 years. So I'm trying to stay interested. So I want to do something in a format and in a way that keeps me excited, like waking up in the morning. And I was like, I can't wait to draw that, or I can't wait to design that or figure out the puzzle of how that's going to work. Um, but yeah, uh, I'm also like a, I'm a fan of like genre. So like, I want there to be, it's going to be crime stories. It's going to be sci-fi, you know, it's going to be um, horror, which I hadn't done a lot of. I'm doing a horror book. Um, so I want, I want mm -hmm. to, still check the boxes of like, this is the genre stuff. This is what you want, you know, when you're reading a crime book, like I want to murder, or I want to like <laughs> something, you know, um, I want that, but I also want to do it in a way that seems new or a little weird, but I, I don't want to, like for me, the Fluxus movement is like all about change and about doing some shocking the viewer or, or doing something that is just like so off the wall. And that what I want to do is try to take that and just steer it, steer it into a narrative, you know? So, so you're still getting like a beginning, a middle and end. You're getting characters that you, that yeah. you care about, you know, but we just do it in a, in an interesting way. That's slightly different. I mean, comics, just the way comics work is, is, is a crazy medium. You know, it's not prose, it's not words, it's not movies. It's like, it's its own thing. So already just making something a comic book is, is, a uh, is sort of, making it strange <laughs> sure yeah yeah comparatively um so I, i'm curious then so as you're you know you're talking about different ways of designing things and and different ways to sort of keep yourself engaged in and doing new stuff you know one thing you've done recently with my management is you've extended the narrative to this hidden movement board game um and like this thing's incredible like i so like i'm i've i don't have it i've only watched the videos somewhat recently i missed the kickstarter somehow and yeah. now i'm like obsessed with this thing it's like it looks so <laughs> cool it reminds me <laughs> it reminds me of um i have chris ware's building stories you know that but like it's yeah. actually like you know it's a game like a real game yeah when you're doing yeah when you're doing something like that you know do you view it as as an extension of that universe like as an extension of that story um 
And I, I guess I'll pause there. Like, do you kind of view it as like, I'm, I'm, this is like the next chapter, but it's a board game. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I, I, when I was doing mind management, I was doing, I was doing a monthly book by myself. And so I was doing, I was writing, drawing, coloring, lettering, doing the production, the design. There was no ads in the book. So the back covers, the inside front covers, everything, there was nothing that showed up in print that wasn't something that I touched and put there, you know, and I did that for three years. And then when I was done, I was like, I was done. To me, that was like my, per that's my perfect book. It was like everything I wanted to do was in there. I got to do it exactly how I wanted to do it. I didn't, um, yeah. you know, it was just everything. So I wasn't going to ever reboot it or like restart it or like, or, um, you know what I mean? Do it different, do more of it. You know, I was like, I'm done with that. Like I want to do some other books to tell other stories, but the problem was after doing it for three years, I'm like, oh my God, I'm thinking, I'm always thinking mind management. Like it's, it's sort of like brainwashed me <laughs> into like how I think about <laughs> story and character and ideas. So every idea I was getting was like, oh, this would be, that'd be a perfect mind management story. Um, but I was like, I don't want to do that. So what I, my solution was to just do stories, do the ideas, but do them in a, do them in a different way every time. So I did a book and record where you read along and then there's a book and a uh, comic book and then you listen to the record but then the record doesn't it's supposed to read it to you but what it's actually reading to you is not what you're seeing at all it's something different <laughs> so it works mm -hmm. it sort of subverts what you're looking at um and then i put secret messages if you run it backwards there's a secret message but um so i, I did a story like that i did a mini comic with fluorescent ink it was just like a small run thing um I did. Uh, and then the board game, I was like, well, this is great. I, I do, I see it as an extension in that um, it's not just repeating like the story of what I did, you know, and then putting, it's not, it's not like licensed stuff where it's like, oh, this is, I read the story and now here's like the game version of it. I wanted it to be something that was, uh, if you'd read everything, it's like, well, here's an, ex here's something extra. Here's a different story you can get, or here's now, here's a game where you're, it's actually indoctrinating you and then making you an agent of mind management. So like the whole thing works as like a kit, like that you would get in the mail um, within the reality of the comic where they would send you this game and the game is actually training you to be an agent. So in my mind, that's what yeah. it is. It's like a, it's a real thing. <laughs> it's training you to be a mind management agent. Um, and I just felt like it was, I wanted to keep telling the stories, but I wanted it to take a different form every time. So we did the board game and then uh, we did this deck of, there's a deck of cards with art and then, and then it's a 52 deck of cards. It's a standard deck, but every card has a different rule on it that sort of ties into the character. So like you, you can play a normal game or you can follow the rules on those and play, it messes up any card game you'd ever play. Um, which uh, gave me another idea for like doing a series of books. I'm doing, working on a series of graphic novels, mini graphic novels that are decks of cards that you read and flip like this and read through and then you reshuffle and then mm -hmm. uh changes the story <laughs> um what else was i going to say is that yeah, going to be through is that going to come out through the flux house line? yeah 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 so i'm working on those now the first one's a time travel story and i wish i should go get the map of it because but the idea is you read through it and then at the end the guy goes back changes something in time and so you have to uh, put the deck in a different yeah. order and read it again um and so like, it's just so complicated, <laughs> but, but I like the idea too, of having a book that's like a, like if you hold a deck of cards, it's not dissimilar from swiping on your phone and reading like a phone, sure. something on your phone. So, but I like having the deck of cards and then you have to shuffle them again. And then also um, maybe they work as a deck of cards so <laughs> you can, you can repurpose uh, <laughs> those, but yeah. Um, yeah. I thought, so this launching this new series, like the long, this is the long version of it is I wanted to, I was like, well, I'll do, I'm launching the imprint. I want people to uh, be excited about it. And then, but maybe starting with something familiar, mind management, like people have read it. So you kind of know, some people know it, some people have at least heard of it. So we'll start with that. But I didn't want to do, I didn't want to just do, write and draw another thing like normal. So I, I approached this like, um, and it's titled bootleg because I wanted other artists to come in and, and almost make it feel like um, I wasn't totally in control of it, or like here's other artists mm -hmm. coming in, sort of doing like their their version of it, or like doing like a an um, unofficial 
<laughs> um, sequel, even though it's not a sequel, but like an un, their unofficial version of it. Uh, that's that's yeah. sort of uh, not fully condoned by me or Dark Horse. <laughs> or, um, so that's that was kind of the the idea. It was like, and then it allowed me to team up with some some of my favorite artists and and sort of let them put their their spin on it. Yeah, for sure. That's really cool. So it'll be it'll be four issues, and that's starting about I think a month from now, from the time we're recording. Yeah. Um, would you say if people are looking to pick it up, do they need to have read the original run? Again, I highly recommend it. I think it's a it's a great read. But do they need that story to pick up bootleg? No. I here's the thing. Everybody always says like, oh, it's not a here's it's not a reboot. And it's not a sequel. Um, and everybody that's ever done like a longer run always says, oh, here's a good jumping on point, you know, and it's never a good jumping mm -hmm. on point. <laughs> it's always a lie. Because <laughs> right, people yeah. want you to buy the new one. Yeah. But I did it. We tested this on um, someone <laughs> in, uh, that's helping us with the uh, marketing and everything. And and she had never read Mind Management, never. And she's like, oh, she didn't know anything about. She had never read the old stuff, picked it up, read it. And and she approved of it as something she didn't need to know what happened before and it worked for her. So, so we have tested okay. it on a human subject. <laughs> <laughs> human trials have already been yeah. taken care of. Okay, amazing. All right, cool, cool. So you bootleg, we're definitely gonna be looking forward to um, with the return. And, and I guess from there, I don't think anything's been announced, um, but kind of kind of where are you hoping to move the imprint to kind of order of operations or what people should be excited about from after mind management? Yeah, I, uh, I'm writing and drawing another one right now that my wife, Charlene, is painting. Um, so we work together in Department H. So she's this is the first yeah. painting work she's done since then. She wanted to take a break because doing a monthly comic is hard. <laughs> so she, she took a little time off. Um, so I'm working on one now that uh, is all written. I'm drawing it. Should, that should be coming out like in December. We haven't announced it yet. Um, but it's cool. basically it's. It's got spy. If you've read anything of mine, you know it's either going to have spies in it, it's going to be science fiction, or it's going to be a little bit of both. <laughs> so, so that's more yeah, of a spy yeah. book that's coming out. And then, uh, and then we're doing again. We're playing with format. So the co the covers for that, it's spies. So like I wanted to do, um, it's got a normal cover, but it's going to come wrapped in a uh, like a grocery bag, <laughs> like a paper grocery bag. So on the shelf, it's just going to look. It'll look like kind of like a piece of trash, <laughs> um, <laughs> but, but it's to sort of like disguise itself, you know, because of to go with the spy yeah. theme. So we're doing that's as weird as it gets. But inside, it's like a story. If you want a story with characters and things you want to care about or whatever, all of that's there. We're just we're just making the object, you know, interesting. You know, we're just we're just sort of playing with that. But um, so that's coming out, and we're I'm doing a book with David Rubin right now. He's drawing that's got like a literally a thousand characters in it. It's, I don't want to say what it's about. Right. It's a little bit of uh, science fiction, maybe a little slightly superhero. I haven't really done any creator on superhero stuff. So this is sort of dipping my toe a little bit into that. Um, and yeah. literally there's a, there's a thousand characters. I'm writing all the backstories for all of them. And um, it's insane. <laughs> but, and That's then awesome. uh, what else? Awesome. Wilfredo, Wilfredo Torres is drawing one now too that we can't talk about, but he's, uh, um, he he did bang with me, and and uh, we wanted to do another thing, so we're doing yeah, that. and uh, yeah, a couple other things. We can't. Sorry to be vague, but I can at least tell you who I'm working with. No, Tyler no, Pinkins, I know it hasn't been Tyler announced. Did another horror book, so <laughs> awesome, awesome. All right, yeah, no, I've definitely got my shop on alert for the. I'm like, all right, I want whatever's coming out through this line. I want I want to check it out. So I I, I recommend people do the same. Um, with one of my. You know, you mentioned you haven't done superheroes, but one of my favorite things with my management is kind of like it kind of sneakily functions like a crossover espionage and superhero universe, you know, just because you have all yeah. these imaginative power sets, you know, with with psychic or, or mind managing abilities. Right. Yeah. Do you have any favorite abilities that you didn't get to use um, or if not, like what's your personal favorite one that you came up with? Because there's there's a, such a fun degree of specificity with the way that that powers are applied. What, what are your favorites? Yeah, I, uh, boy, that's tough. Yeah, and it's funny, like, after I, I was so immersed in mind management and so focused on making it seem grounded, you know, and, like, it's very important to me that, like, if somebody has an ability to do something fantastical, that there's at least, like, a science 
a fake science rash, rationale for how it works. <laughs> so, sure. um, so yeah. I was very uh, careful to do that. But the, when I was done, I was like, oh, somebody was like, oh, this is like X Men. <laughs> like, it's like, damn it. <laughs> like, I mean, it kind of, <laughs> but, uh, so you can't get around yeah. that. But, uh, um, but yeah, as far as that goes, I, I just wrote, I wrote a thing. There's a character who, uh, I guess I like this idea of like contagious ideas and which I think is not far from a real thing. Like, I think you see things happening in the world and like it plants seeds of ideas in people's heads. And I liked, I like having a character who could do that, but have do it with purpose, you know, like, and then as a way to like do good, <laughs> you know, like, like, oh, I'm yeah. going to plant instead of like these bad ideas or bad thoughts that get into people's heads to be able to plant um, these contagious ideas that get people that like improve the world or something. I don't know. <laughs> it sounds dumb when I say it out loud, yeah. but, but in, in, uh, in, in the story, whatever, it's good. Of course it all goes wrong. I'm saying it like, Oh, it's going to be this great thing, but of course it all goes wrong and, and it's horrible, but, uh, similar to kind of the opening of mind management when, uh, Zanzibar is on fire and everybody's destroying everything. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. The, be the best intentions, yeah. but, uh, <laughs> but some but some ultimately negative outcomes. Uh, alongside that that same kind of you know thinking, again I mentioned earlier, you know I love the the secret messages that are coded in, into you know the gutters of my management. Just that approach to comics, mini comics on the bottom of the page. So you at any given time you have like potentially like three to four stories per page going on. Just there's such a uh, but the way they all intersect and just there's a degree of like, I actually have to focus on this, <laughs> like, you know, that you're demanding of the reader. What uh, what kind of works or, or things inspired you to to do that style of comics? Because um, definitely for me, like that was my management was one of the first comics that I ever picked up in print. Like I didn't start yeah. collecting comics until yeah. like the early 2010s. Oh, I'm so sorry. So for me, it was like it was absolutely. <laughs> yeah right yeah. no but i loved it because it was, it was mind-blowing i was like oh like I've, i'd never seen anything like that was there stuff that you had seen like that that inspired you to do it or did, did the inspirations come from from other you know forms um yeah to, all i can say is like the things that i like reading and and i get a hold of are are yeah they're all they're all sort of like gosh i'm trying to think of my earliest um influences but i think um, something like Catch Twenty Two is a, like one of the early influences, where where it's it's a story that's just jumbled up, and so you have characters that are living in one chapter and then dead in the next, then alive again, and sort of you get he got a lot of irony and things out of that. So that was mm -hmm. kind of a complex web of character and things happening, and you sort of had to reassemble it in your head as you read read along. I, so I love the structure of that book. Yeah. Um, there's a book. Uh, Gosh, I think while I was doing mind management, this book House of Leaves, which is like a horror book that, that sort of played with the structure, even the layout of the book, where at the end it's just like you're reading it in a spiral. Um, that was I love that, you know. Um, and then I think uh, Dave Eggers, when he, um, I think it was a heartbreaking work of staggering genius, where he had a lot of footnotes. Oh and, yeah. And I love the I love footnotes as as narrative, you know, or as as like a way to like to increase like the value of what's going on in the book in the main narrative. Sure. And so in, in a lot of ways, I felt like with my management, um, those are some of my early influences, but, but as I was doing the book, I'm like, it's like $4 for a 24 page comic. I don't want people reading it in, in five minutes, you know, like you pay like four or five bucks for it. You, you know, you can go see a movie for $10 and be entertained for two hours. So I feel like at a minimum, I want you to take like 20 minutes to read it, <laughs> you know, like, uh, yeah. so I felt like that was really in the back of my mind was like, I want people to take their time with this book. I want them to read it once and then go back through and read it again. So like I had the text on the side, so not to interrupt the narrative, but just so you see it and maybe you notice it at the end and then go back and like, oh, okay, now I'm going to go read that and sort of see how it works. It gives you just a little more interactivity with the, the thing rather than you read it and then forget about it, you know? And and so I feel like that was my main mission was to pack every page with um, something interesting, you know, so you're looking at it and, and to try to slow the reader down a little bit. I, uh, I remember one of my earlier books, I did this book, three story secret history of the giant man. And I worked, it took me like a year to do it. And it was maybe 250 pages. Um, and I was at 
my first convention with the book and I was selling and I was excited. And, and then a guy came up, bought it and then left. And then he came back like 20 minutes later. He was like, yeah, I just, I read this over lunch. It was awesome. And I was like, it was like a, it was like a, I had this realization that it was like, I spent a year of my life. So this guy could read this book in 20 minutes over a sandwich. And I was like, I, I need to, yeah, yeah. I need to work harder. <laughs> These books need to be, there needs to be more to them, you know? And, and uh, so the flip side is now I, I get, I, people come up and like, oh, I feel, I don't feel like I'm not getting it all or I'm not, I'm not, I was like, that's okay. Just like, you could read mind management, just the art with the word balloons, just read it only like that. You'll get it. You know, the extra stuff is there in case you, so you don't feel cheated. You know, I you spend 20 bucks for the paperback. Like <laughs> you, uh, I want you to get your money's worth. Yeah. Yeah. No, I get that. Um, it, that's funny. I feel, I feel like 20 minutes is too fast to read a, to read three stories. I think for the so record. too. <laughs> like, <laughs> <the art. laughs> yeah. Yeah. There's more, there's more to digest there. Are there any, um, secrets to, to mind management or frankly, any of your other works? Cause it's not like it's the only work that has codes that, um, that folks haven't discovered that you, you had hoped they would. Is there anything like you've snuck into a book that you're like, I can't believe nobody's figured that out yet. Yeah. There's a, there's a couple of things. There's, there's a few things I'll forget. I'll go back and flip through something. I was like, there's something there. I was doing that on the book and record. There's a, there's, there's a hidden message in the, in the art. Oh, there's two things. There's something in mind management too. But yeah. There's a couple of things where I'll go through and I'm like, Oh, there, this is weird, but it was for a reason. And I forgot, I forgot why. And so I was looking at one the other day mm -hmm. and I'm like, Oh yeah, this is what this is. It spells out like a secret message. If you read like in the background, the art in the background is, is letters. And then when you read it over the course of a few pages, it's something. And there's a early issue of mind management where with Dusty, who's the the music, the kid music kid, um, and his origin yeah. story, the the panels of his origin story is Morse code, you know. And then so it's like oh. dashes and dots, dashes and dots for the whole issue that's panel borders. And then nobody ever I was like, why did I it was so hard to figure that out. And like, <laughs> <laughs> what, what can it say? And then it it, it may force you into certain layouts because it had to be long and short, long and short. So it was so hard sure. to do, and then nobody noticed. I was like, "What? I was like, what am I doing with my life?" <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> I guess it was worth it. That's amazing, though. That's that's honestly very very cool. Even though that, yeah, it, now now that it's out there, somebody's got to put yeah, this yeah, together. No, Maybe it'll be. Yeah, I, and I was like. Those are things where I'm like, I'm never going to say anything, but then nobody knows this. So I'm like, I guess I'll start blabbing about it. <laughs> yeah, right. You got to you got to get the credit at some point. It's been yeah. uh, it's been a decade since it launched now. Um, that's incredible. So like this whole the focus on, um, I guess, the 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 fluxes and the, and the movement of things. Um, you'd mentioned uh, George Brecht's The Case as, a, as an influence. Right. And it kind of that led me down a rabbit hole of researching flux kits. Um, and these artistic movements, which were basically like for people who don't know, basically, you know, just picture like a briefcase full of like stuff <laughs> and like yeah. little art, like little art projects. Um, I, one of them that I loved, I loved the description was it was uh, it was mini poems about beans and it was mm -hmm. stored next to dried beans. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like that was it. <laughs> That's amazing. It's, it's so, so fun. Like, yeah, exactly. Um, how do you think you're you're going to try to mirror that? with with fluxes right and these, these fluxes. yeah i don't know i'm hoping i'm hoping that if i disguise my books in uh paper bags and then and then it makes you walk past the like i'm always thinking about like the rack at the retail shop right so it's it's all the big bright colorful comics with stuff going on and so i'm always picturing my books in that context and it's just like those those flux kits, you know, where they, they put the, it's like fishing tackle box with weird stuff in it. Or when you're walking through a museum, like we love museums. So we're always going to museums. You walk through and it's like amazing paintings and all this stuff. And then you, and then you see this, like this beat up briefcase with stuff in it. And it's like, what in the, what is that? Like, and mm -hmm. then it's just, that's what I want. I want people to walk into a comic shop and then they're looking at all this great art and everything, and all these fun comics. And then they see, and then they'll see my thing <laughs> and be like, what is that? And so that's the feeling I'm trying to get. So like with, 
we're going to just do it with the design and the size of the books. Some of them are going to be magazine size. So they're not, they're not, we're not doing horizontal books. Somebody's already asked like, Oh, retailers hate horizontal weird formatted things. I'm like, we're not doing that because, <laughs> but I want to do like larger format things, um, magazine size, um, play with yeah. uh, like fold outs and gate folds. And like, we're with the mind management bootleg They're the special version is coming poly bagged and it's printed it's like fluorescent pink um printed bag and then uh there's a card there's a playing card inside it and those playing cards are just like standard playing cards except that they have they have extra rules on them too each issue is going to have its own special card that sort of ties into the theme of the issue but it's also a playing card you can put with any deck of cards um and then it changes the rules of whatever game you're playing. Kind of like the whole deck we did. Yeah. But these are just individual cards that are designed to work on their own with a deck. Um, so that way we're trying to just like insert like that paranoia of mind management into like your everyday life. <laughs> if you play cards, my wife and I play cards, <laughs> yeah. we walk to the coffee shop and play cards all the time. So um, I really did it for us so I could put this card in there and then it's like a, it has a weird rule on it. and. Um, so there's four different ones and then the backs are different. So that's not going to match your deck, right? It's the same size, but it's, it's, uh, it doesn't match. So the beauty of it is, um, you know, that the other person has that card, but then you won't know, oh, well, which one do they have? Cause there's four of them and they all break the game in some way. Well, which one does that person have? You don't know. Um, and then, uh, so you're waiting for them to play it, you know, and then the other person they know that you know you have it. So <laughs> so you have to sort of play that card in a different way. Right. So it, it adds this other weird, like outside the game layer to the game that uh, I think is kind of fun. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I'm just trying to have fun. I really yeah. like that Fluxus movement and the things they were doing. I was like, they're just having fun, you know? Like, let's make comics yeah. fun and make something that, that sort of st stands out or looks out of place. <laughs> Well, I, I so appreciate that because when I think a lot these days about like, why am I collecting the things I'm collecting, you know, and, and especially with print, right? And it's kind of like, I've said it a bunch, like I love comics to death. I've got so many of them and all these long boxes, but I, I constantly say like, it doesn't make sense. <laughs> like it, yeah. it's not a logical financial purchase often, <laughs> yeah. you know, it's just the thing I like to have. So when you talk about putting value into them, whether it's within the pages or because it's styled and designed differently, like that's, that's increasingly really important, I think, to stand out in shops. Um, Cause otherwise it's like, well, why did I, why did I put down four bucks for, like you said, 15 minutes of story that I could have read digitally and I wouldn't have had to leave the house. It would have been easier, Yeah, you know? So it's, yeah. there's, there's a real challenge there, I think. Yeah, no, I, I do. I just want to, I want people I want people going into shops, right? Supporting your local retailer. I want people excited to read a, like a single comic again, you know? And I, so I want it to work that way. And, uh, and I think mostly because I'm like you, like if you, we've been collecting so long, you just kind of, I'm like, I'm doing it out of habit, but not, it doesn't have yeah, that same right. spark that it had when I was 20 and going in every Wednesday and getting like a stack of comics and then go home and, and then, look at them all, put them in order. I was going to read them and then read them and then, and then uh, skip to the whatever, you know, it's like, I'm trying to figure out how to capture that again, you know, as a creator, but also as for people reading, you know, it's like, we got to do that. I want to be excited. There's nothing, there's no better feeling than getting a stack of books or comics and then uh, seeing them and you don't have time to read them yet, but just seeing them like waiting there for you and be like, Oh, I can't wait. Oh my God. I can't wait for the new, yeah, whatever yeah. it is, you know? And, and then you flip through it and you're just excited. Like that anticipation, I'm trying, that's what I'm trying to get back. Love it. Love it. So, all right. I have two fairly specific questions that do not, I have no transition. I just have two <laughs> questions sure. I want to ask. Uh, the board games, the board games, are there any plans to get those back, uh, back in, in stock? Yeah, we were looking to buy it. I'm glad you asked me. We, we uh we did the Kickstarter last year. It was did great. And then mm -hmm. um they there's a huge demand. The guy I'm a huge board game nerd or whatever, like that's my hobby now because comics isn't really a hobby. <laughs> it's like a job. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. But uh so I've got into board games last few years. But yeah, these guys, the guys that shut up and sit down this this channel, they did a video of the game showing the game off, and then we immediately it just like spike we sold out right away and so we went right back to press 
Um, the, the short answer is we are, there should be copies um, for sale starting in August, like late late August. Cool. I'd say September for sure, probably August. It just depends on with shipping and everything like that. Like it's it's been a little bit weird. Um, but yeah, there'll be enough for everybody. Retailers should be able to order them. They'll be there. You can get them online or I'll have them on my website. But um, yeah, there'll be a, we, we printed a bunch. <laughs> so there'll be more of those. And they come with that deck of cards too. We did a deck of cards to go with it because I always wanted to do uh, playing card art. <laughs> Yeah, no, it's pretty. I watched your I watched your unboxing video on YouTube, yeah. um, and then I, I watched some other reviews, and it was just like glowing reviews from the from these board game folks, uh, um, and just yeah. the game looks so cool. So that must have been exciting. It was so fun, and I don't know, like it was two years of like play testing the game, and like I didn't design like how it works, like Jay and Sen or like the game designers, they design all the mechanics of it. Um, so yeah. I didn't know. I'd been playing it so much and was so close to it. I was like, I don't know if this game's any good. Like, there's no way to tell, you know? Like, I don't know. <laughs> it's like, I played it so much that um, I'm just not playing it in a way where like I play normal games or I'm just playing for fun and playing to make sure it isn't broken or make sure all the pieces work or like judging the art. And <laughs> so it's just different. Um, yeah, I was so happy people liked it. But um, yeah, talk, there's so many secret things in that game. Like there's there's a... There's so many secret things hidden in that. I've never, I've jammed more into that than anything else I've ever done. Like there's a little red disc that is a round marker. That's like a clear red or like a red uh, thing you can see through, but then that decodes things all over the place. Like the cards, the, the, the construction manual, the box, the inside of the box, there's like inside edge of the box has stuff on it. Like it's, <laughs> I have a, I might have a problem. <laughs> <laughs> well that sounds super fun i mean i yeah i saw you on the video you're like i saw some some people on message boards are trying to decode it and you you were just casually like yeah they they don't, they don't have all of it not even close no no nobody's got <laughs> it just pretty fun yet. like if you enjoy that stuff <laughs> yeah that's amazing that's amazing i love it okay cool so that'll be back in stock that's exciting the other thing i want to ask with my management <laughs> so in the first volume this is not a spoiler yeah. um the field guide is yeah. is introduced to us and then three or four issues in a voice starts shouting at us through the field guide right and it's like you've mm -hmm. seen this before and it's it's clearly like you know trying to tell maru to, to wake up yeah whose voice is that is that her subconscious is that yeah. her her try conscious like where's that coming from yeah yeah it's a my minor spoiler but yeah i, I always felt like that was her her voice come break trying to break her out of sort of the loop she's in you know because when you first meet her I don't know, this is a, kind of a spoiler, but you first meet her, she's done all of that before. So it's her old, it's her old self being like, come on, <laughs> like, stop, stop following the rules, stop listening to this, you know, it's her trying to break out of it. And um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's, that's a good question. No, okay. it's funny because they, uh, she, at the end of the first arc, she, um, she gets the envelope in the mail. And it's, it's like from herself, trying to wake herself up, I think. And then um, but yeah. when I was actually doing the series issue three, I wasn't going to know if I was going to get to do more than six issues until I was, until I was already drawing the, the sixth issue. So I was drawing it and then waiting to see what the sales numbers were to see if I was even going to get to do like the whole run or not. So I wrote, I did an alternate yeah. ending where, um, it totally ends differently <laughs> in issue six. It just ends. And, uh, so I drew those as like a backup so it'd be done. Um, and then the series got renewed and, and then, uh, was able to finish the whole thing. Um, but I had those, but if you look carefully at the end of issue six, like when she goes to get the thing the, there's a knock on the door and she goes to get the, the mail, um, there's space between the panels and I put like the original ending there. So it was almost like an alternate ending. Like if she hadn't woken up or broken herself out of the loop, um, that was kind of the ending. And so I, I put that in there, like the art for like the there's a parallel universe where I didn't, I only did six issues and that was the ending. So I put that in there yeah. as, a, as sort of a background um, parallel universe ending. <laughs> so wait, it's like, it's like hiding behind the panels. Is yeah. That so there's, there's the normal panels and then there's a little gap between those uh -huh. and there's like blue lines, which is just like pencil blue lines of what uh -huh. the other version of what happened where she doesn't, 
she doesn't break out of her loop. <laughs> That's amazing. So in one of in one of Phil Verge or Verve's alternate universes, my yeah. management ended at at uh, issue six. That's yeah, incredible. exactly. Oh, I'm glad I kept going because definitely gave me gave me a lot of joy over the years, and it was a it was a blast to go back to. Thanks. Um, so, okay, Matt, this has been awesome. I'm super excited about what's coming next for bootleg and all these projects you're describing. Um, I mean, in terms of what's next for you, it sounds like, you know, you got, you got a super full plate here with, with flux house. Is there anything else on the radar that people should be aware of? Yeah, I don't know. I just, please keep buying the books, order the books, um, support your local shop, get the books monthly. They're all going to be collected eventually, but supporting like the monthly books is important for the artists and getting everybody paid monthly regular paychecks are good. And then uh, also, um, yeah, I don't know, TV, hopefully some TV, I was hoping we'd have some TV announcements uh, in time for like this summer. So maybe we will, maybe we won't. If we do, we'll do another, let's do this again. We'll talk about it. Yeah, no, for sure. That'd be a blast. So you, you said you got my management is in development. Um, yeah. I forget, what was it? Bang, um, you said as Bang's well. Are there any others that are that you're waiting on? Yeah, Department H too. They're all, they all, for some Department reason, H. they all started happening around the same time and they're all in the, at almost the same stage. So it might be a thing where we announce them all at once, but um, we'll see. <laughs> Hopefully getting close then. That'd be, that'd be exciting to be able to talk about too. Yeah. Cool, cool. Well, that's good news. All right, awesome. Matt, anything else? Uh, anything else you want people to, to go to to find you or anything like that? Um, yeah, I'm good if you follow me on whatever. I'm on all the social stuff, so you can find updates there. Perfect. Well, thanks so much for your time. I appreciate you hopping on. People can find me at Comic Book Herald, of course, pretty much everywhere, comicbookherald.com. And uh, Matt, this was a blast. Thank you. Yeah, thanks, man. Appreciate it.